us to another episode on SUG12 exams. So this episode is a continuation of section A where we are looking at the August 2022 Science Paper 2. So in the first two episodes we covered question 1 through 5 then uh, 6 through 9. So in this episode we are going to cover question 10 through 15. Then the last episode is going to focus on the last five question. So join me as we move to a uh, question e ten. Question a ten deduce the formula of lead to phosphate. So what we know in this case, lead is a uh, basically a metal because it's lead to it has a valence of 2 and the formula for lead is basically p b so because of it's a 2 here the valence is a 2 then phosphate so phosphate is basically given by the formula p o for then a valence of 3 so what we do in this case we just close at the valence then the formula becomes p b small then 3 here then we have the phosphate anion then these two comes here so you are going to have this formula which is in this case basically uh, c so c is the correct answer so before we proceed i would want you to take note of the four other radicals and their variances so that in case a question came in which you are asked maybe to give a formula of lead sulfate or lead carbonate you should be able to answer this question easily number one is the hydroxides so hydroxide they have got this so the valence is one because they have got a negative uh, radical then as EC valence then we have ammonia so ammonia is a uh, given by this then uh, the valence of positive one then uh, next we have carbonates which is C CO3 then it has a valence of two negative then the last one is uh, basically the sulfate so the sulfate is S oxygen 4 then it has negative or 2 negative it has 2 negative then of course we've got the one that we've just done which is a phosphate which has this then 3 negative so what you notice is among these the only one which has a valence of 3 is phosphate so once you know that it's easier for you to answer any question relating to uh, this uh, question we move to question a11 which one of the following substances dissolves in water to form a solution within a ph of less than seven so ph of less than seven so ph of less than seven means that uh, this is basically an acid so we have seven here which is pure water greater than seven this is a base or alkalis then here we have an acid so this is acidity as it approaches zero then this is basicity as it approaches 14. so because it's less than seven it's an acid so we need to look at the options so we have uh, option a ammonia so uh, when ammonia dissolves in water it forms uh, basically an ammonium ion so this one forms an ammonium ion so this one is incorrect then form acid then when you look at a uh, basically magnesium sulfate is a salt and sodium chloride these are salts so when salts dissolve in water basically uh, they dissociate into their respective ions so in this case we're going to have a magnesium ion and uh, basically the sulfate anion 
this is what is going to happen similarly in this one we are going to have basically a sodium ion and a basically the chloride anion so these are incorrect so we remain with sulfur dioxide so sulfur dioxide are basically when dissolved in water they form a basically sulfurous acid so basically what is happening is we have sulfur dioxide then plus water then we end up with basically sulfurous acid this sulfurous acid is basically the one with the ph value of less than 7 so d is the correct answer a12 dilute sulfuric acid reacts with both magnesium oxide and magnesium carbonate how are these two reactions alike so we have magnesium oxide then magnesium carbonate then reacted with sulfuric acid so when we react a magnesium oxide with a basically a sulfuric acid this is a solid sulfuric acid which is aqua solution we are going to end up with basically a salt which is a magnesium sulfate then plus remember when we react an acid with a base which is magnesium oxide we end up with a salt and water then when we react a magnesium carbonate which is a carbonate and sulfuric acid what we are going to end up with is basically we have magnesium carbonate plus sulfuric acid what we are going to end up with basically with a magnesium sulfate which is a salt then plus a water then plus carbon dioxide as in the case so remember when we react uh, an acid with carbonate we end up with a salt plus water and carbon dioxide then when you react an acid with a metal we end up with a salt and hydrogen so take note of those three a general equation so now what we notice from here is what is common so what is common here in this case these are all producing water and also magnesium sulfate this is a common so let us look at the options water is produced very true you can see water here and water here so a is correct let us look at b hydrogen is pro produced no there is no hydrogen so b is incorrect c carbon dioxide is produced it's only produced in one equation which is this one the other one there is no carbon dioxide so we look at d a white precipitate is formed magnesium sulfate is a soluble salt in water so it's not insoluble so d is incorrect so you notice that a is the correct answer question a13 crystals of sodium carbonate dicarhydrate are a fluorescent when these crystals are exposed to hair the crystals so basically we are talking about um efflorescent substances so uh, when you're dealing with a uh, efflorescent substance which is the, in this case the key part to getting this question correct so efflorescent substances tend to lose their water of crystallization when exposed to hair so that's uh, the key definition of uh, efflorescent substances so what we notice in this case uh, this sodium carbonate dicarhydrate which is the common washing uh, paste as this water so when it is exposed to a uh, hair what is going to happen in this case is going to lose water by uh, the equation as follows this one 3 then point 10 then water so it's going to uh, basically break down as follows so we are going to have this um, sodium carbonate with now only one molecule of water then plus the other nine molecules of water will be lost so because this is going to be lost is going to uh, basically become 
a bit dry and hard. So let us look at here are the options. M gains mass and becomes a uh, liquid. No, it's not becoming liquid and it's also losing water. So because it's losing water is uh, losing mass. So A is incorrect. B gain mass is incorrect because of this gain mass. Then C loses mass and remain solid. So it's losing mass because of this water. Then it remains solid. So C is correct. D loses mass, changes to liquid. No, evolves bubbles of gas. No, it doesn't move change to liquid. It remain the solid. So C is the correct answer. Question. A14, one more of nitrogen and one more of ammonium gas have, so what do they have in common? So we have nitrogen, so nitrogen is basically given by this, then we have basically ammonia, ammonia which is given by uh, this. So what is going to happen is if we are to find the mass of these two we notice that uh, ammonia has got uh, has got three hydrogen but nitrogen molecule has got uh, basically two nitrogen so it's going to be basically 14 plus 14 which is basically 28 then we have this one which is 14 plus uh, basically three is going to have 17 so if you compare these two they are not the same so let us see what is there so a have equal number of atoms okay this one has got two atoms four two atoms this one has got three atoms so this one is incorrect b have got equal number of electrons c equal number of molecules d the same masses so in terms of the masses are not correct, but in terms of uh, molecules, they are the same. This one is one molecule and this one is one molecule. This one is not correct because of this. You can see they are not the same. Then uh, equal number of electrons. B is also incorrect. If you check, you notice that um, if you compare the number of uh, protons that are in uh nitrogen so nitrogen the proton number is uh, basically if you go to the periodic table is seven so if you have seven because there are two seven times two is basically 14 okay 14 protons and the electrons if you look at this one this one has got uh, seven then plus this three is uh, basically 10 uh, electrons so this is incorrect but in terms of the number of molecules, they are the same because this is one molecule and this is one molecule. So C is the correct answer. We move to question number 15. A solution of calcium chloride contains 1.1 grams of salt in 250 centimeter cubic of solution. What is the concentration of the solution in molecule per decimeter cubic so this is basically molality so for us to find molality we need to know the number of moles remember uh, molality is given by the number of moles divided by volume volume is in decimeter cubic so that's first find volume so volume we convert this to decimeter cubic by dividing it by 1000 because there are 1000 centimeters cubic in one decimeter cubic so it's 250 we divide by 1000 we end up with basically 0 0.25 decimeter cubic as in the volume then the next step is for us to find basically the number of moles so the number of moles that are in this of calcium chloride so what you need to know is basically the number of moles is given by mass divided by a relative molecular mass of this calcium chloride so if you look at um, calcium chloride it has two elements so we have calcium itself and the two 
elements of chloride. So what we need to do is basically find um, the relative molecular mass of this uh, compound. So you come here on the periodic table. So we have calcium. So what's the mass number of calcium? The mass number of calcium is 40. So we have a 40 plus chlorine. So chlorine is basically 35.5. So because there are two, it's two multiplied by 35.5. So what you're going to end up with a 40 plus basically a 70. So 40 plus a 70, this is going to give us nothing but 110 grams. 111 grams. Okay, so now since we know this, then we can go back and find the number of moles that are in 11.1 grams. So what we do is basically we're going to have number of moles is equal to 11.1 divided by 111 grams. So this is going to give us a 0 0.1 moles. So once we know these moles, then we can come and substitute here. It will be basically 0 0.1 divided by at 0 0.2. 25 then we are going to end up with 0 0.4 so this 0 0.4 is basically the molality which is the number of moles per decimeter cubic so c is the correct answer so basically this is how you answer this question to get um, the one mark so please join me in the next episode which is the fourth episode which will be the last one in multiple choice section where we cover question is 16 up to 20.